everybody, this is Perch. Um, I posted uh, just a kind of a, a su definitely trolling question, I, I think, in the sense, and not, not trolling necessarily for evil, but just to kind of see what some of the responses would be. Um, and it's basically, well, right now, of course, you have the John Ken situation. This isn't really about that. Um, but instead, we have heard for, I, I mean, at least a year, I think two years since they aged up John Kent. Uh, since Bendis uh, did that bit where you had Super Sons, uh, Tomasi was working on that, and then they age up uh, John Kent. And there was a, kind of a, a big dislike over that moment, which I, if I'm being fair, I think was 50% Bendis. People just not liking Bendis and Bendis doing what Bendis often does, which is kind of change around uh, continuity to fit what he's wanting to do. And so I think there was a feeling for sure of here comes Bendis doing it again, basically changing a character away from, you know, a fan favorite kind of situation and, uh, you know, turning it into something that for, for him. And, and I think there was this feeling like Bendis was taking away somebody else's ability to tell a story again, fair, or not fair. That was half the criticism. And I think the other half was Super Sons was a uh, popular amongst, you know, a, a very kind of vocal group of, of customers, fans. It sold okay. It wasn't like this was a, an incredible uh, top-selling book. Super Sons was, was fine. Uh, but it did have a good fan base. And I also think uh, there, were, uh, there was a lot of story potential. One of the reasons why it took off, I think, as well as it did, is that DC really hadn't dove into this idea of kind of two fully fleshed out kind of characters that are younger kind of having adventures. It felt like a throwback, I think, to 80s comics. Not not power pack, but kind of, it, it felt like something that people aren't seeing right now in comics. So people liked it. So when they aged up John Kent, uh, there was a, damn it, Bendis is changing things. And why is he doing that? And there was a, you took some story potential, you took some ideas off the table. And uh, we talked with uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson and briefly kind of mentioned this. And he points out, I think correctly, that uh, yes, you did take, I mean, I, I appreciate his honesty, you, that you did take stories off the table by aging them up. You know, it's not it's not hiding from that. I appreciated uh, Johnson's honesty in the sense, uh, I mean, I don't know if not honesty is the right word, but a lot of people are shying away from that. They won't even acknowledge that piece. That, yeah, you did. And I think it's obvious. You clearly, when you when you age up a character like that, you remove a section of their life you can tell stories about. You took stories away. No doubt about it. Now, conversely, you've opened up new stories faster, which is what has also happened. These stories that we're currently getting with John Kent were ones that couldn't be told for, I don't know, in comic book time, somewhere between 10 and 500 years, I, I depending on how fast they want to age him. Look at Franklin. Franklin has had the longest adolescence in history. No wonder he's so cranky. I mean, this kid's been going through puberty for roughly 25 years now, right? I, I don't know. At any rate, uh, so, you know, this has happened. But I posed this question on Twitter, which basically said, hey, given the new rules of the DC Omniverse, I read the press release. I saw what uh, Jim Lee and, and Scott Snyder and, and others said. Um, they said that, you know, at the conclusion of death metal, all stories matter, all stories uh, count, that there's not out of continuity, you know, nonsense. And that part of the, the mission to the creators is that they had more freedom to say, to do whatever they want to do, to tell the stories they want to tell. And a large number of creators, uh, from Becky Cloonan to, uh, they, they, whoever the guy is, that's always attached to Becky Cloonan to, uh, I, that sounds like shade. Well, maybe a little bit. But just all the different writers come in and they make these same kind of, you know, DC. I feel like we've got some creative freedom. We're able to do stuff. We've heard Jeff Thorne on the show talk about it. Lots of people talking about we have freedom to do what we want to do. Cool. I think some of that's spin. I don't know that you can have complete freedom to do what you want to do when you're put on contracts with a very short-term window and you have no long-term uh, visibility into your future with the company. I'm not sure exactly how much freedom that is, but, but putting that aside for the moment. If all this is true, you know, we have the Omniverse, Death Metal opened up the door to lots of new storytelling capabilities and everything else. Couldn't DC have their cake and eat it too? Couldn't they right now produce a Super Sons comic that's out on the shelves that people could read that features young, 
meaning before he was aged up John Kent and Damien having adventures, and you can still do what Tom Taylor's doing over there in the 17-year-old Superman book. Like, why couldn't you do both? Wasn't the entire point of this Omniverse and all the marketing and all the things you said, wasn't the entire point to give yourself the ability to do exactly this, to give yourself the, uh, you know, the ability to, to do what you want. That was, that was the entire point, right? Well, um, and here's where I've got some questions for you. If you're, if you're listening along, you know, but chime in in the comments, okay? Why, first of all, why couldn't they do that? Well, you might point out they are doing that. In fact, there is a Super Sons comic, sort of. There was a, there was a digital comic, and then the digital comic was going to get released and eventually printed. That comic is doing, I don't want to say terribly, but not well. It's, it's definitely one of the lowest books DC's got, which indicates, no, even though people are asking for a young John Kent, they're not buying this book that features a young John Kent. Why aren't they? Well, that's a good question. I think uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, uh, the marketing for that book has been extremely confused. Uh, DC definitely chose to kind of, I don't want to say stealth release it, but they're not putting nearly any attention behind it. If this is something people think, uh, you know, can get out there and, and get some, uh, get some promotion, they are, they're, they're not bothering with any of it. As a result, it's, uh, it's going under the radar of most people, uh, a large number of people who are John Kent fans who say they want super sons are unaware that this book is even being made. Um, uh, Number two, the whole digital first and then we're going to print it strategy clearly is not thought through. It's not working. Uh, people are, are not understanding that it's, you know, you can get it in print later or maybe they feel like if it came out in digital, then it should be cheaper when it comes out to print because it's old at that point. Who knows? But it's not working. So that's a, a clue for DC for a large number of things in the future. But the third one is... Immediately, when this, so I posted this, and a couple of people came in going, "Hey, jackass, they are publishing this book." I'm like, "Yeah, I know that was kind of the that was kind of the point." But other people came in, and they they perhaps gave the most uh, chilling comment of all, which is, "But it doesn't matter. We know where this story is going. It doesn't matter if they tell stories set in the past. We've already seen where everything is going. Now, whether they're talking about an aged up John Kent or John Kent is bisexual, who knows what? Who knows what they mean by we know where it's going?" But the point they're making is, I have no interest in the story now. Even though I like these characters, even though I've been shouting from the rooftops, de-age John Kent, for two years, more, however long it's been. Even though I've been asking for this, pushing for this, and everything else, I'm still not buying into that comic that features the what I want. Because it's set in the past, or it's set in a timeline that's not the current timeline. If it's, if it's that, then I don't care. I find that really confusing. But also, isn't that completely damning to the entire idea of the Omniverse and everything that they set up? I mean, if the point was to make a, you know, a, a landscape for comic writers to be able to come in and tell any story set at any point, it all counts. Well, the customers are telling you it doesn't count. And we could say, oh, well, those are just the loudmouths on Twitter. Okay, that's fine. But the sales are terrible. You know, this, this comic is not selling. It's not selling top digitally, at least as we can tell from the charts. It's not selling in, you know, in the printed version either. It's, it's basically not working. So maybe it's not working for a completely different reason for what, you know, people are saying online. But I suspect it's the same. I suspect a lot of people are looking at this going, well, eh, this isn't the real John Kent. The real John Kent is now 17 He's in a bisexual relationship with, uh, with, with this Nakamura kid, and um, this, is, this doesn't count. It doesn't matter. I don't want to buy a flashback. I don't want to buy a, you know, something set in a previous time book. Even, even if you tell me, DC, that it counts, it doesn't count to me. I'm not going to buy it. It doesn't matter. I think that is what's going on. I don't think that it's a bunch of people who are protesting buying the book because the character is now bisexual. I don't think that's it. I think it is purely that, because keep in mind, Super Sons, this book, came out the beginning of this year. It's been out for a while, long before Tom Taylor was ever announced to have anything to do with John Kent, and it wasn't selling. The customers were sending a message that basically was, 
hey, uh, you know, I, I, I hear you that all these stories count all the time and the Omniverse makes it all matter, but this isn't the current, quote unquote, the current look, the current spin of the character. Therefore, I don't care. I'm not going to buy in. I don't want it. The only thing I can conclude is the entire idea behind the Omniverse Everything Counts it, is that it's a failure. It People don't want it. It's not working. The idea behind it may have been a good one, but doesn't doesn't matter. It's not resonating. And the fans are basically telling you that they are going to pay attention to current continuity, quote unquote, current current time continuity and nothing else. And the implications of that are pretty, pretty significant. What does that tell you about things like the Legion of Superheroes, which is in the other direction? It's in the future. Does that suffer from the same fate? Legion has had a hard time making sales in the last uh, 20 years. Once upon a time, that was the strongest selling book that DC had. It was at the top. Uh, 12-year-old Jim Shooter wrote that book, and it was selling way more than comics today. It was set in the future then. What's different? Why was uh, you know seeing a comic set in the future okay then, but not now? What's changed? Well, I think one thing that's changed is uh, we've taught people that kind of other times, we, we've taught people that continuity can be easily erased, adjusted, changed, that it doesn't matter. No matter how many press releases you put out that say, you know, the Omniverse, now everything matters, you're not fooling anyone. There's been too many retcons, too many alterations, too many shifts to the point that basically go out of their way to say, these stories don't count. The Legion of Superheroes back in the 70s or 80s or whatever it happens to be, uh, even further back that, 60s, those comics didn't all count. It wasn't like they were defining the future of the DC universe. It, there, there was likely a bunch of adventures there that didn't matter in the sense of defining what the world was going to be. It just nobody worried about it. They, they were entertaining stories and it was good enough. But then when the company went in and started actively saying, this counts, this doesn't count, we're retconning this, this changes, now the future you thought you knew is not what you knew, the second you start doing that, you're basically locking all the readers into one timeline, into one perspective of how things should be, and you're sending the other message, the damaging message, hey, all that other stuff, it doesn't really matter. You can still make money off Elseworlds books and what-if type books, but there you're going to have to really bank on a, a pretty strong writer and creative team. Tom Taylor can come in with uh, Injustice or with Deceased, and you know it can make a lot of money as an Elseworlds kind of tale because you've got a top artist on it, you've got a top writer on it, and it's telling a pretty self-contained story and so people can buy into it. But at the same time, nobody believes that Deceased matters. That if you're making big plot developments there, it, it doesn't count. Nobody cares in the sense of plot progression. They care because it's a good spectacle. And that's very different. But the Super Sons example is, is interesting because it's revealing on a bunch of different fronts. First off, it says that, you know, the people have been loudly claiming for, I want, uh, you know, the, I want the, young, the real John Kent back. I want the, the, the de-aged John Kent um, when given that opportunity, they didn't go in. They ignored it. Why? Because they felt it didn't count, which tells us the comic publishers, if you want to sell your story, you're going to have to make sure you're sending the message that it counts, that what they're reading actually matters. And in today's current state of, you know, hyping up press releases at USA Today and other places for your, your characters, you're going farther and farther away from this story counts. I do believe they left a lot of money on the table with Super Sons. I do believe that the kind of the fallacy of, hey, you know, we are creating this world where everyone can come in and tell stories from different perspectives and get that stuff over. It's actually, it's, it's a nice idea. It's, it's not going to work in practice. People are going to be very reluctant to buy into a comic book that isn't adhering to what they're being told not even what they believe. What they're being told is the current continuity. Keep in mind, there are a great number of fans who would love to ignore 
everything that's gone on with John Kent since Bendis aged him up. They would like to ignore all of that. But despite the fact they would like to ignore it, despite the fact that they aren't going to buy it, this new stuff, they're not going to buy the old stuff either. This also represents an interesting shift in comic buying behavior because once upon a time, you know, you would go back and you would buy back issues and you would invest in stories that arguably don't matter because the comic publisher has, you know, has spoiled it. They've moved on. They've, they've evolved storylines. I mean, if you know the Green Goblin's going to come back to life in Spider-Man, why would you go back and seek out the back issue of him dying? Well, lots of people did that. Why would you bother doing that? Well, that used to be comic buying behavior. We may be in a different place now where whatever the current uh, storyline is, whatever the current moment is, that's what people are going to invest in. And if you've altered it up, if you've retconned something, if you change something significantly, you're going to kill your back buying potential as much as your future buying potential. I remember when, um, you know, and we, we posed this question to, uh, to Johnson during the interview we had with him. And, and he said the same thing. Yeah, creators could come in and they could do a pitch and you could have a young John Kent Damien story and you could do all that. Uh, you could. I don't think DC is going to accept that pitch at this point. I think it confuses the message too much with what they're currently doing with John. And I think they just had the Super Sun series that bombed. So why, why are they going to green light another series of this? Uh, they're not going to. And if they're not going to, what is, again, the point? of the omniverse where any story is possible and all that matters. It doesn't. The customers are telling you it, it doesn't matter. If it's not set in the right now, it doesn't matter. What does this mean for the Legion of Superheroes? If you're doing something off in the future, I, I mean, Bendis tried as much as he could to kind of connect little things like, oh, Damien's going to do something very dark in the future. Oh, or, you know, there were, we're rallying around John Kent, other kind of things. I mean, Bendis tried to kind of, make the future seem like it counted. But he was unable to do that. Legion of Superheroes under Bendis didn't do well. It didn't sell well. and It didn't move the needle. Rumor has it at DC, they're getting ready to gear up to do Legion of Superheroes again. I don't have a lot of confidence it's going to do well when they relaunch it. Even if they do bring in Hickman in to define his own universe, the best case scenario is that whoever's doing Legion of Superheroes basically draws a line in the sand and says, I'm doing my own thing. It doesn't matter to the rest of everything else. And we're going to create entertaining stories. You come in, you dive in, but it's, it's almost separated from everything else DC does. It's kind of what you have to do. If you don't do that, I don't think anybody's going to buy in and care because you set the expectation that the current timeline is the only one customers should care about. I find the, uh, the whole Super Sun situation really fascinating because even when giving the, the customers what they asked for, you know, DC has basically moved on and the customers have moved on with it. Even though people want this to happen, it's not going to happen. They're not going to DH John Kent to be a hundred percent clear. That's not going to happen. So, you know, if, uh, basically all they have to bank on now is that this new take on the character, what Tom Taylor is doing with John Kent is going to be wildly successful. That that's it. Will it be? I mean, who knows? But it does seem like they've given up quite a lot. And it also seems like a lot of their mandate and their mission and some of their planning for the Omniverse and everything that spun out of death metal was a, was a no-go. They didn't get the customers to come along with it. What do you think? Where does all this go for you? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.